Hello again, everybody. Uh, you'll notice a few differences in our video today. First of all, there's two of us. Hey, how you doing? Not bad, Mr. Dimitri. How you doing? Awesome. Awesome. All right. And then you'll also notice that you can see us in the bottom corner of your screen. Uh, so not only do you get the pleasure of hearing our voices, you'll also get to see our beautiful faces as you're watching the video. Thanks. Yeah. Thank <laughs> all right. So our topic today is going to be about the Indus River Valley civilizations. Uh, it's a fancy way of saying ancient India. And so we've already talked about uh, Egypt. We talked about Mesopotamia. Now we're going to look at another example here in ancient India. Like all of our other civilizations, our essential question today is how does where you live affect who you are? And first we're going to be talking about the geography. And starting out with the geography, I want to talk about the rivers. Uh, the two rivers that were in uh, India that were very important to the civilization were the Indus and the Ganges River. Okay? What they provide was fertile soil. Whenever these rivers would flood, they would provide a silt which creates fertile soil. Um, if you look in the top right picture, you'll see the green area. This green area is the fertile soil that it provided. And if you look at the bottom, this is, these are pictures of what the river looks like. Also, if you see the other pictures, that is the Himalayas Mountains, or Himalayan Mountains. What this provides, more often than others, is great protection. They are the tallest mountains in the world. And if you relate this to Egypt, Egypt didn't have this kind of protection. Um, armies, they can, armies can get over the mountains as easily as they can get through the desert. So this provides a special kind of protection. Okay, another huge part of India's geography is their climate. And the one term that is incredibly important uh, for ancient India are the monsoons. And what the monsoons really are, they're, they're simply winds that mark the different seasons. When we usually think of monsoons though, we think of very wet periods. And the wet season in ancient India takes place from June to October. And we're actually going to show you a quick video here, it's about a minute long, of what a monsoon looks like in India. Maybe. At Chase, we want to make sure you get the most out of your Chase Sapphire Preferred card every time you use it and every time you redeem your points. That's why we... Here we go. Here's my scene. So again, the monsoons are a huge part of life in ancient India. The timing of these is incredibly important because if it arrives too late, if they don't get the water that they need, the seeds that they've planted won't get the water they need and their crops will fail. Um, if it arrives too early, it'll flood before they can even plant. So the timing is incredibly important. Even though these things play such a major role in their lives, uh, so many things can go wrong with them. You see this picture at the bottom left here during monsoon season, this kid trying to carry his cart through the street. Again, if it rains too much with these monsoons, the floods wash away the crops. So it's kind of an interesting thing to depend on because you need the water, but it's got to come at just the right time. So monsoons are a huge part of life in ancient India. And in early civilizations, go ahead, this was your... Okay. Um, the ancient Indians had two major cities, two, for our purposes, two major cities, Harappa and Mahenjo-Daro, and we'd like you to remember both of these cities. Um, there's some pictures here on the left of what these ancient Indian cities looked like. And you'll notice that they're pretty sophisticated looking. 
a lot of ancient cities were kind of just thrown together with what they had, you know, houses in different places, things like that. But the ancient Indians were very well known for their city planning, and they used something called the grid system. And you've probably seen this before if you've ever gone to Chicago. Um, you, you walk through the city and things are laid out in a grid, city blocks. Okay, so that's what the, the ancient Indians used, and it allows you to lay out the cities in a much more organized way. Okay, this picture down here, actually you see the, the two, one here in the middle, the one at the bottom, these are pictures of citadels, one of the key terms here. Citadels are strong central fortresses. Um, you'll notice that they're raised up so that if invaders want to come in, they have to go up and they can have to go through these defenders. They put um, the military up here so they can stop the, defend the uh, invaders from coming up. Okay. Also, the ancient Indians are known for something that we take for advantage, take advantage of a lot of times, take for granted, um, plumbing and sewage systems. Prior to this, most ancient civilizations, when they had um, their waste, I don't know if they have a better way of saying that, um, their waste, they would either dump it in the streets, or sometimes if you um, were living in a two-story building, you might just dump it out the window onto the street. So if you can imagine walking down the street and getting that kind of stuff dumped on you. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can also imagine the smell of a lot of these ancient places, but the ancient Indians actually invented a system of plumbing and sewage so that their waste would be sent underground in these tunnels along the side of the road and then emptied into usually the rivers um, is where the stuff would go. So it's pretty advanced um, for these ancient Absolutely. civilizations. Absolutely. Why did they disappear? Could it have been because of floods? Could it be invading forces? Could it be major earthquakes? If you look at this picture on the left, you'll see a bunch of bodies. And these bodies look like there must have been a disaster. But we don't know because there's no written accounts. Right. The ancient Indians didn't have, these original ancient Indians did not have a writing system that we know of or that we can figure out. So we don't know exactly what happened to them. So who knows? So it's, it's really a mystery what happened to these people. <clears throat> Unsolved. Yeah. When will we ever figure it out? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, the next group of people, though, that came into the area are called Indo-Aryans, and these are the people that brought a lot of new technologies into ancient India. Okay, the Indo-Aryans themselves were nomads, and this is a term that we've talked about before. Hunter-gatherers were also nomads. These people were, um, were those who travel around a lot. These particular ones came from the north down into India. Now, we've talked about two other languages in this class so far, cuneiform for the Mesopotamians, mm -hmm. hieroglyphics for the Egyptians. The Indo-Aryans used a language called Sanskrit, and you'll notice here at the top right, these are some Sanskrit symbols. So again, we're, not, we're still not getting into our modern English yet, um, but very similarly to the other two languages, it's a lot of pictures, a lot of symbols that represent certain things. So the ancient Indians used a language called Sanskrit. Now, this picture here at the bottom left of this little plant here, um, this is called the Soma plant. Okay, and um, the ancient Indians believed that the Soma plant, if you, if you got the juice out of it, um, it would be a drink of immortality. That's incredible. Right. Um, and immortality means that you, you don't die. You can live forever by drinking the Soma plant. Um, the funny thing is, though, is that Soma is actually a uh, hallucinogen. Um, so when you drink Soma juice, you actually start hallucinating. Um, it's it's kind of similar to taking um, certain hallucinogenic drugs nowadays. But basically, you start hallucinating and imagining yourself in all these different situations. So really, when these people thought they were drinking a, a drink of immortality, they were really just getting really high. Um, it was kind of ridiculous. I, I guarantee you they liked it then. They probably enjoyed it, yeah, for sure. Um, but it definitely was not a drink of immortality. If anything, it just let them have a good time for a little while. <laughs> um, okay, and then the people here at the bottom right, these are people called Brahmins. And this isn't the first time that we're going to talk about Brahmins in this unit. Um, but Brahmins basically were special priests, and they were given really special treatment in ancient Indian society. They were the ones that controlled religion. Um, they ran the religious services. We're going to get into um, Hinduism coming up in our unit. Um, but as long as we understand that Brahmins were these people who were, had the most power in uh, ancient India. Okay, and then lastly, looking at society, um, most, for the most part, Indo-Aryans had lighter skin. Okay, and as far as marriages, I know we've talked about divorce with Egypt and Mesopotamia. Um, in ancient India, parents actually arranged marriages for the most part, so you might not even know who your um, bride or husband's going to be. I'm sure they weren't happy. Sometimes they weren't, um, but sometimes you, you, you get married for financial reasons more than married for love, and that's what a lot of the stuff here was. So your parents would basically tell you who you were going to marry. 
Okay, besides arranged marriages, and it's kind of interesting here, you could also buy your wife, so marriage by purchase. <laughs> and then uh, later on in the ancient Indian society, they allowed um, marriage by capture, which meant that if you captured a woman um, from another area, you could bring her back and then you could get married to her. So you could basically capture your wife. That's uh, like stealing. Yeah, steal your wife, can you yeah. imagine that? <laughs> um, so the Indo-Aryans, kind of uh, as a legacy, brought a new social order called the caste system. And we're going to be looking at this caste system in more detail when we get to um, Buddhism and Hinduism, because it's a huge part of those religions as well. But that's how their society was organized, in this caste system. Um, they brought a new language called Sanskrit, which we just saw on the last slide. And they brought new religious ideas, Hinduism, to India. And that's what the next focus of our, our class discussion is going to be, how this particular religion affected all parts of ancient Indian life. Well, well said. And uh, we're great, and we're happy that you guys got a chance to watch this. Tune in to next time.